Um, all right, well, I'm going to introduce Anne, and then we're going to take her poll, and then she is going to get started. So the poll just popped up. I'm going to introduce her. Feel free to vote on that. So Anne championed agile procurement practices as the CIO of the Environmental Protection Agency for over two years and was recognized in 2015 as one of DC's top 50 women in tech. She has since transitioned to the county of Santa Clara to continue her transformational work at the local level. And her poll says, my organizational culture is either all in with agile DevOps and customer focused design, um, or trying agile and DevOps with pockets of success. Um, we think we're doing agile, but we're really doing agile fall or last agile. We're still in the 1970s. Want to see my mainframe? So please vote and I'll read the, um, the answers. 26% of us said all in with agile DevOps and customer focused design. 37% said trying Agile and DevOps with pockets of success, and 28% said we think we're doing Agile, but we're really doing Agile fall. 10% of us said Agile, we're still in the 1970s. Take it away, Anne. All right, thank you very much. Um, and I think that uh, a couple of things to mention to start off with. Uh, first of all, thanks, uh, Chris, for the shout out to eManifest. That was a, a great program uh, for um, uh, Greg and I to, to sort of get our feet wet in Agile at EPA and we learned a lot and, and a lot of the stuff we learned is demonstrated not only by what I'm going to talk about but what Greg is going to talk about and also that poll which is Agile's hard, right? Getting the culture change there is hard, convincing people um, that uh, they're not doing Agile when they think they are and helping them move to it or convincing them that they should actually try it, those are all challenging things. So as I get started I also want to mention um, a shout out to Greg that uh, he will find uh, the foundation of some of these slides. Uh, they, they don't, they're not an EPA template anymore, but they may look awfully familiar to Greg. So um, there's a lot here that comes from the work we did together and um, the opportunity to learn from him in his, you know, after he'd been through 18F in his background. So um, moving right along, what I'm going to talk about is, is about culture change and about how we make um, Agile work in the government. So we start by, by trying to understand, we talked a lot about at EPA about creating a modern CIO shop, one that can support an Agile uh, culture. So what is that, right? That is um, a culture fundamentally about disruptive innovation. So if you look at this list of things here on this slide, there are a lot of those things you could actually do. Um, and not do disruptive innovation, right? You can do incremental innovation um, in running Agile and being user-centered and doing modular contracting. But when you really start talking about um, doing DevOps and doing open innovation and Agile security, uh, when having a new business model, it requires a new culture. And so that's really what we're gonna talk about today is that new culture and how to get um, from where you are in Agile, excuse me, in Waterfall to a culture that supports Agile. Um, and I'm actually, I left this slide in even after I looked at Greg's slides, um, but I'm not going to really talk about it because I, I, I had to go look, check, make sure Greg and I weren't going to say the same things. And he's going to talk a lot about uh, lean startup and lean thinking. So I'm going to leave that to him. What I do want to say though is simply that that process was critical to our ability to actually move. We had to think about um, changing the way we work and you know the fundamentals of Agile, and I will leave it to Greg to dig into that later when he talks. So how did we go about culture change at EPA and how am I doing it now and how would I do it in the future? Um, so to create innovation in the government, you have to create a burning platform essentially, uh, because you know, in the private sector, the burning platform is often somebody's brought ready to eat our lunch, we've got competition, we need to find a way to get better. In the government, um, some of those external drivers don't exist. Um, so when you find them, uh, you need to use them or you need to create them internally. Um, so for example, uh, and, and Chris talked about a little bit about some of this, right? We had the healthcare.gov uh, situation where that uh, was failing. We had the OPM breach, right? Those sorts of things were burning platform for those agencies to change. Um, at EPA, actually eManifest was one of the burning platforms that eManifest was failing, that Congress was looking at the organization and saying, what are you gonna do? So that was one of EPA's burning platforms. Um, but we saw lots of other projects that were, that were failing um, or that were challenged. And if you don't have a burning platform, you can create one. You don't have to have something that's falling apart. You can create a case for your organization as to why change is important. But in order to make change, you have to have that case, right? You have to say, this is why we need to change. And then, um, 
you need to be able to make the case as to what your vision is, right? Um, so you need to have a vision of the future that you can articulate to your organization to help them understand why, where you're going to go. We've talked about why you're going to change, but where are you going to go? So for example, um, you know, for EPA, our vision was we want to avoid creating new legacy systems that create high risk. We want to avoid uh, solutions uh, that are high risk. So we want to have uh, a development process and solutions that are going to be modular, they are going to be low risk, that are going to be successful, and are going to enable us to improve our business processes and better meet our customer needs. And so we create this vision of the future. Whatever that vision is for you, you have to be able to articulate that. You have to be able to tell people why they should follow you, where they're going to, where you're going to take them, right? So that's the next step in culture change. Following that, uh, and pardon me, my I thought I moved that uh, down so it wouldn't be falling off the screen, but it still is. Um, you need a set of values to articulate your organization. How are you going to behave in the future to help us get where we're going? Um, and here's a set of values that that. Uh, I've used it at EPA, but also I would uh, fundamentally are the same set of values we're espousing um, at uh, at the county, and I think that they're they're a good set of values in terms of the ability to move from the at uh, the uh, waterfall world to the agile world. So um, the first one is that people should take risks, and you know the interesting thing about that is that um, if you talk to people who are doing waterfall they believe that they are reducing their risk. So telling them that Agile is a risk helps them, you know, and that they should accept that risk helps. But the reality is, as we all know, waterfall is not low risk. Waterfall is very high risk. And it's actually, um, by doing Agile, it is reducing the risk level. But what you tell people is, we're asking you to take risks. We're asking you to consciously make a decision to take a risk by experimenting on your Agile projects or by um, attacking a project that you might not do otherwise, or simply by doing Agile, right? So we're, we ask them to take risks. We ask them to make sure that they have the top cover from the organization and that they make smart, take smart risks, right? We don't say, go out and do something stupid. We say, go out and do something that makes sense, but that is a little risky. We also encourage people, just the fundamental concept of Agile, right? Start small, fail fast, try again. That's the whole experimental piece behind Agile. And we really are trying to get that message, right? It goes back to um, some of these huge monolithic programs in the federal government, right? You do this big program and then you get $100 million in and you're failing. No one wants to admit they're failing. They just want to keep throwing money at it. But if you spend $50,000, you run a pilot and you decide either this is the wrong solution or there's no value here, you can do that and you can move forward and it's okay, right? I can, as I used to say in EPA, um, I can go to Congress and I can justify $50,000 if anyone ever asked me, but they won't ask me. They're going to ask me to come up and explain why I wasted $100 million. And that I can't explain. Um, we also really encourage people to have a bias towards action. Right? I think um, one of the risks being in the government is people sort of start to get this attitude um, that is very understandable, that um, Things take as long as they take, and we're just going to wait for it. And we're telling people, no, be impatient and have a bias toward action. Those two together are about moving things forward, even when the system might want to slow you down. How do I find a way to get through this? How do I find a way to make something happen in an organization or a space where things don't happen fast? We also really talk to people about breaking the rules, not the law. Um, that's a whole lot of where some of this agile procurement stuff comes from, right? Is people looking at the rules and saying, wait a second, I don't, you know, these aren't, these rules don't work for me. How do I, how do I change them? How do I break those rules? Um, because if they're just in the government, if they're just quote rules and there's no legal basis behind them, then you can change those. You can essentially break the rules. You just have to make sure you don't break the law because none of us wants to go to jail. Um, and then finally, take ownership. You know, we talk about a lot about empowering people, but that's still even the phrase empowering people is me doing something to you. So what we tell our people is, I don't want to empower you. I want you to take ownership. I want you to own this project. I want you to own the solution. I want you to own the problem. And that really helps our folks um, really focus in on how they can be the most effective in their roles um, and really you know, take a project by the reins. And that all those values, you just have whatever your set is. This is my set. You can have a different set. It all depends on what's going on in your organization. But the point is, you take those values and you reiterate them. You don't just, you don't put them up on a wall and say, here's the values, let's go. You have to talk about them, you have to live them, you have to create examples of them, 
And as you go along, um, then people will see them and they'll join in. And it's, it's a very you know, sort of soft and squishy process. Um, but over time, you'll see people start to embrace them and you know, come in your office and talk about, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to do that. And it really does work. Okay. So the next thing you need to do is, um, is also build support for the organization. And this is an example from the EPA. And again, this is, this is directly courtesy of Greg. Um, this slide, but um, what what he and I did, and uh, others after Greg, and uh, hopefully continuing, is created an ecosystem where, so wherever you looked, people were pushing you back towards user-centered design, uh, agile, agile and lean, modular design, and open innovation. Right. And so, if you went uh, to any office in the organization, if you went to the team that did assisted acquisitions in our organization, if you went to the administrator's office where they, had, where they were building a design thinking group, if you went to the strategic sourcing team, whoever, wherever you went, those things would push you back into Agile. So I want to do this. Oh yeah, go ahead and do Agile, do Modern. All the people in these organizations were aligned conceptually. So even though the entire organization was not conceptually aligned, the people who had the ability to influence the process were aligned. So what does that mean? So first of all, it means you should be building support throughout your organization, finding those key people who are essentially gatekeepers that will push people back into Agile when they're trying to go other directions. So having your acquisition team uh, aligned with the idea that you're going to do module acquisitions, you're going to do this differently. Um, it, integrating that in your strategic sourcing process, having HR supporting you by helping you hire the right people. We used fellowships, which is under their NHR, to allow us to more quickly um, uh, hire people who understood Agile and who could help train others. So, you know, we, we brought in, and, and this is a lot of these, you know, this is where these folks at ATF come from. This is a lot of these people on this phone have been, on this call have been through fellowships. That's a way of getting expertise in the system. That's a way of pushing back on the desire to go to waterfall. We provided coaching. We provided cloud services. We worked with the digital services teams across the government. Right? When we implemented FITARA, which is the Federal IT Acquisition Reform Act, we put the agile principles into there. So wherever you looked in the organization, that push was there. And so part of that culture change is making sure that everybody throughout your organization is lined up to force that culture change to keep it happening, okay? And then obviously, these last couple slides really are sort of duh moments, but I'm going to say them. You have to implement the right tools and technologies. You have to give people the modern tools and the open source technologies that will enable them to do Agile, right? If you're going to say, oh yeah, but by the way, um, we want you to use this, this, this uh, monolithic system and we want you to code in COBOL, right? Agile is going to be kind of hard, right? And we all know there's, I got one now, there's COBOL systems lurking around everywhere. Um, so those things really do still happen. So again, you got the modern tools and the modern technologies to make that successful. And then finally, as I, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you have to integrate development operations and security. If you truly want you to be successful, um, you can't have everybody throwing things over the wall. Your developers have to be running their own test cases, right? Um, the operations folks have to work with the developers, the security folks have to be working with, with the operations folks. It has to be one big team.